through uh, OP, the chieftain of the you know the Viking Beer Club UK. Yeah. Um, and and I got to know through him. I got to know. I got to know about him through a friend of mine who has recently become a member of of that club. Mm-hmm. And so it's like you say. So it's like the whole bikes and beards have always. They've, it's been a no brainer. It's been from the from the beginning. In my obviously, I know like the Viking era, the Vikings were way before bikes and that. But yeah. fundamentally, like street culture of of beards, in my opinion. Um, kind of really originated with with the old school 60s, 70s bikers, you know, yeah. um, which is kind of where where I got because I've been, you know, I've grown up around bikes and and the the MC culture, uh, so to speak, you know, that that's kind of what attracted me to it, and and also for me, it's the only bit of hair I can grow on my head. Um, yeah, I'm <laughs> gone. Um, but you know, so. so We've got kind of going back to like the whole inspiration of Opie's Beard Co. Did you watch Sons of Anarchy because you were literally just like the idea of the show, or is it like for me? For me, Sons of Anarchy was I love the MC culture. Yeah. Um, is that is that a similar thing for you, or yeah, yeah? I mean, I I, I love the culture, just the the you know, it's going to sound really weird, but the, the look of it, just the flannel shirts, the beards, the tattoos. I've always been into that. Um, I don't know where that came from, um, but I guess you. I, I, do you know what? You probably, when you're younger, you just see people, don't you, on the street, and you think, "Ah, oh, he looks really cool." Yeah. And those those people for me were the guys that had their sort of short, slick back hair and the sort of beard, probably sort of my length, tattoos up the neck and on the knuckles and the ha- arms and all that sort yeah. of thing. You know, the the jeans. Um, yeah, that sort of that sort of look. The boots. I just, I just thought, yeah, that's that's a really cool, cool look. So, Sons of Anarchy. Um, do you know what? I don't even think I started watching it from the beginning. In fact, I didn't actually. It was a show that I saw a trailer for, and I, I usually do this with a lot of shows. To be fair, I'll see a trailer and think that looks a good show, and then I won't watch it for about three years. I'll let it get three years ahead of me, so that when I do watch it, I can binge the crap out of it. Um, and I think that's what I did. I think I ended up watching it um sort of after about season four i think was already out or something like that um so i actually dipped into it quite late but yeah it was just you know just watched the trailer and thought yeah that's that's my cup of tea you know that's yeah. that's my sort of that's my it wasn't a bit obviously a bit different than things like break break it <clears throat> excuse me breaking bad or something like that you look at it and think oh you know yeah. not, not really my culture but you know it looks all right and i've heard good things whereas sons of anarchy you know, I dare say it could have been a lot crapper than it was, and I probably still would have loved it just because of what it was based around. Yeah, see, see, for for me, it was um, like growing up where my dad was quite involved in um, in in the MC culture. You know, with certain clubs, um, so I kind of naturally kind of teared to that anyway. And for the tattoos, it's like. Um, well, I grew up I, from the age of nine. I grew up in Spain, and like one of my neighbours, Argentinian, and I, I, he he come out of his house one. Well, I come home from school, and there's a there's a sports store parked parked outside this house, and I'm obviously never seen this guy. And all of a sudden, he walked out, and his big beard, fully sleeved up. Now I'm going back to like the mid two thousands when uh, tattooing wasn't as big in Spain. Like obviously, yeah. the UK has always had a massive cult tattooing culture, which Obviously, a lot of it being that the UK was, in my opinion, the military connection and so to speak, things like that kind of brought the tattooing into the UK quite early on. But in Spain, there wasn't. And I'm again, who you know, for people that are watching, if I'm wrong, I'm I'm only talking my opinion on on how I saw it, you know. And so anyway, so back to like my friend, like fully tattooed, both arms, leg piece. And, and rocking a rocking a sports star on, uh, in a soft tail frame, you know, it was like again, it's really anyone that knows Spain knows that building uh, custom bikes is quite hard due to re- re- EU regulation, well, Spanish regulations. But that was kind of like for me, the MC culture thing come from my dad, but my dad wasn't sleeved up. Yeah, and then my neighbour kind of like I just saw it like is that kind of similar to you? Like the, the MC side for me was already there this all of a sudden this look of this newer version of that culture like because obviously the old boys weren't really getting fully sleeved 
they'd have obviously the small military style pieces yeah. and then obviously eventually they're coming to bigger bits but you know, again I, you know i'm only talking kind of from what like but my neighbor i was like that's one cool looking dude you know yeah, yeah. and that's kind of for me where where all of a sudden getting sleeved up and like say on your knuckles and things like that yeah i think it, as well for me it, it was just you know those sort of things are just the ultimate sign of masculinity aren't they just a a a big muscly dude with tattoos all up his arms big beard you know slick back hair boots jeans uh flannel shirt you know on a motorcycle it's you can't get more masculine than that i don't think i don't think you can unless he's carrying a machine gun as well (laughs) you can get a lot more you know you can't really get a lot more masculine than that can you so i think that's i mean i grew up as well watching a lot of pro wrestling and that's obviously super masculine as well. So maybe maybe it's just one of those things. I just always wanted to be like a, a, a masculine dude kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. See see for me, I I'm like for like with tattooing, so like um I, I do a bit of tattooing. I worked in a studio for a bit before and, and kind of now like obviously being having a family, I needed a consistent wage. I kind of stepped back from it and Reef fell back in love with tattooing more on a level because then I'm entertaining people that, that I'm entertaining people that want to get tattooed because of like they're taking it more serious. I don't know. It's really weird to kind of I don't really want to dive too much into the tattoo industry because obviously it is a great industry, very, very hard industry to crack. Yeah. Um, but like the tattooing. I, I was attracted to tattooing for the idea of the rebelness, like I think that the foot kind of the footballers that have gone and got fully sleeved up and that is don't get me wrong as a tattooist if you're at that level and you're getting booked up every day that's great but i like the outlaw vibe i like the the rebel to society and i i I was attracted to the idea of just because you are a scary looking dude that that will hold your own if you have to but happens to be the most gentleman type person out there yeah. yeah you know looks can be deceiving and that's kind of that's I, I kind of like that rebel outlaw vibe of the tattoos and beards and the MC culture. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, it's it, ultimately it's, you know, it's how you want to look, isn't it? At the end of the day, it, that if you're comfortable with how you look, your whole life can change. And it's the same as if you're unhappy about how you look, your whole life can change. It's all about trying to be comfortable in your own skin, which I think is kind of lost in today's world, being comfortable in your own skin. Everybody's got to try and be something they're not or change to be something else. Uh, I think just try and be happy in your own skin, you know, and I think if if a tattoo can make you happy in your own skin, I mean, some people obviously get tattoos just because they like their design. Other people have memorial tattoos, stuff like that. There's a whole different range of things compared to like we were saying, like you were saying earlier with the tattooing, Years ago, it was just literally you walk in the shop. There's a bunch of flash on the wall. You just say, "Do you know what that one looks good?" And I, and it was more often a case in the, you know, when my old man was younger in the seventies. Uh, it was a case of not just what you like; it's what you could afford. It's Absolutely. Like, it's like okay, I've got this much money. This is so. This is you, right? not this shelf, not this. Thing. It's this is you. It's like right. I'm going to pick one of those because I want a tattoo, and I've got this much money. Um, Whereas it's all com- obviously completely different now. Everything's custom. Well, most places are custom. You rarely see flash anymore, which I think is a little bit of a shame. I think I think if I'm like I don't know if you've been uh, last time you went to a tattoo convention, but I mean flash flash never fades. I mean, and obviously one thing I noticed with we're attempting to do flash style work, like obviously now we call it trad work. Um, it is the type of work that looks so simple. But I tell you what, pulling one off, pulling a, tat, a, 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 a clean traditional piece up, like to a presentable level is so hard yeah, because yeah. them lines have got to be crisp, consistent, bang, bang, you know, high color saturation. Um, yeah. you, you've got to be like the old, the old timers, like the old dudes that were killing it back in the day and. Um, you know, they, they were just grafting, they were grinding, they, they were literally just, they were, you know, there was no messing about, they they did it because that's what they had to do and like now, obviously now tattooing's moved along a long way, a long way forward, but 
trad work's never going to go out of fashion. I mean, I, so I went to the Leeds Tattoo Convention a couple of years ago, and by far the most represented work out there was trad work. Yeah. Do you know what? I really got to have one done at some point because every single one of my tattoos is all custom. Um, and not most of them actually not through choice. Like the, my first tattoo was just, I, I mean, it's, it's it's frowned upon now, but barbed wire I had around my foot, around my arm when I was my first one. Early uh, 2000s. That was 23 years ago. So, yeah, what would that have been? 2001? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was seven, exactly, I was yeah. seventeen, so I you know I couldn't I couldn't choose before that I couldn't choose to do it because you know my old man wouldn't let me. But he uh, I was seventeen. I was thinking we was down in Great Yarmouth, and I said, "Dan, I get a tattoo, Dad." And he was like, "Yeah, all right." You know, he's quite covered in tattoos himself. So at seventeen, I was like, "Sweet." So went in there, and I was like, you know, I didn't want to get anything massive, a because I couldn't afford it, and b because you know you, you, the unknown of pain and all that sort of thing. So I just said to the dude, oh, like, have you got any barbed wire? He shows me these three on the wall that are flash. And I was like, oh, you know, I don't know. And he said, oh, well, yeah, do you know what? I can custom draw it on your arm. So I was like, okay. <laughs> Full trust in the guy for no reason whatsoever. So he drew it on my arm. And I thought, yeah, that looks all right, actually. You know, I was only 17, so I wasn't going to say anything to this big, beefy, tattooed dude anyway. If it looked like crap, even if it was like a My Little Pony one, I probably wouldn't have set out. So, uh, yeah, I think it cost me... 40 quid or something like that and yeah that was that was what she wrote i really don't regret it though i mean people you know people dog dog the old barbed wire tattoo but you know what at the time it was it was great for me i mean i mean i know you know obviously we've wandered off onto tattoos but but ta tattoos tell a story you know i mean and i don't know if you probably noticed this as well but you can you can look at someone's sleeve and kind of get what they're about just by looking at the sleeve yeah you know like oh, yeah obviously every skulls are massively uh, every, i mean i love skulls um skulls are used massively anyway even w you know w women having some amazing feminine skulls done I, t yeah. I tattoos i'm trying to convince my missus to get more skulls done but i've she's got a skull in there and she's not even really into them but but yeah. like you can you can kind of tell like w you know w what people are about by the tattoo not obviously not all the time but you they're just different you know like like yeah. like culture related like i love custom work i love chicano style work you know i love yeah. that i love that la ink prison yeah. style again yeah. kind of where i'm attracted to the outlaw lifestyle yeah. like yeah yeah again not just just like maybe it's childish to say it but the idea of i don't like being told what to do you know and, and i don't believe that by not being like but by not being like to be told what to do doesn't make me a doesn't make me a thug, you know, doesn't yeah, make yeah. me a, a hooligan to society. And I kind of like, you know what I mean? It's like... Jason Clark had joined us. So if you're still watching Jason, evening, mate, hope you're well. Uh, yeah, it's, um, I, I, obviously I do apologize, Jason. I'm um, obviously I was picking, I was picking Jamie's brain on this earlier. I'm new to the new to StreamYard. So I don't know. I don't know how you show up notifications from people. Um, so kind if, you of go just... on the, if you go on the right-hand side, there should be private chat and then comments. So if you click on the comments bit, it will come up saying, because uh, there's a little private chat where we can have a chin wag through Messenger, like we'd have the time to do it anyway. Um, awesome. And then there's another bit next to it. If you see, Are you on that? Yeah. It, says, yeah, I it can... will say who's commenting, and, and it will also show the little logo of what platform they're, they're on. So Jason oh, yeah. on Facebook. So can, can you see these as well? Yeah, I can see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, just, awesome. I, I think yeah. you can. I think you can drop a comment though, and I can't. So yeah, you can. So I can. Yeah, I, yeah. I, there we are. I can do that then. Sorry okay, about yeah, that, Jason. You sure can. Still here, bro. All good. Thanks. And sorry again. Like I say, I'm just after after what happened last week with the other other uh, other streaming website. I'm just trying to see if I can improve on it. So let let us know if um let us know if the video quality is better as well and it's not obviously i know i know we just dropped out a signal then but it, um does does my video quality come across better as well which is kind of something i'm interested to know but yes yeah, so i can't remember really remember where we was i think we're still talking about like the the different style of tattooing weren't we was um yeah that's it yeah just just different i think it was different tattoos that suit different yeah. people and how you can tell you can kind of tell a little bit about the person by their tattoos and 
Yeah, yeah not necessarily. I was getting. It's not discriminate. Like I, I, when I say oh, like no, kind yeah, of yeah, tell yeah, about yeah. them, it's yeah, not yeah. tell like them as in them in personally. Kind of. Yeah. You can tell like if a guy's old school chopper style type of guy, or yeah. like the modern day pretty boy like love you yeah. know like love island type vibe yeah, football it. and again it's not discriminate against against any of them you know yeah 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 definitely yeah yeah no i, I think you're right you you know there's obviously and there's also so many different ways to tattoo now like all the um i can't remember what they call it now with all the different you know obviously blackout tattoos are the newest thing aren't they i mean i, I you know I, I don't really understand those too much if i'm completely honest um, i don't i like I like a tattoo to be something that you can look at, you know, something that you can look at and just admire, um, which is also a reason I've never really been into tribal because I just, you know, it's not something that I can look at and think, wow, you know, I prefer the sort of portrait, uh, old school sort of portraits um, and the Mr. Cartoon ones as well. That, that sort of style, I think, is really cool as well. Did you um, watch his you... documentary on Amazon? No, I didn't. Is it on there? Yeah, there's a there's um because obviously Mr. Mr. Cartoon was kind of the he was the guy obviously after the iconic Ed Hardy because obviously yeah. Ed Hardy like there's a really again another really good documentary called um, Tattoo Nation that's yeah. hosted by Ed Hardy okay. and then obviously Mr. Cartoon was kind of the the guy the kind of leading it to in the respect of black and grey you know yeah. um, Chicano style work and obviously. Yeah. I believe he was massively in with, I, I, can't, I don't know the name, but one of the videographers that happened to do a lot of the work for um, Cypress Hill. and Nice, yeah. Um, again, great. If you get the chance, watch it. It's a great documentary. And obviously, yeah, I would. I didn't see it on Car- there, to be fair. Yeah, it is on there. I can't remember what it's called. Something Tunes, I think. I can't, right, you know, okay. you'll, have to, you'll have to have a look. But um, Yeah, yeah. But yeah, because he's he's still he's still massively doing what he's doing. I mean, but again, he's obviously earned the right to kind of pick and choose what he wants to do. And yeah, I don't I don't think that style will ever go out of fashion. I just think it's a tremendous tremendous style. And I think yeah, I think those yeah. sort of styles won't ever go out of fashion just because, like I say, they're so interested to look so interesting to look at. Um, yeah. Whereas I think you know other other things will will eventually fade. Yeah. So, so obviously, like we've um, when do you think that the because at one point the beard the beard scene kicked off massively. What do you think? What do you think yeah. triggered triggered that? Do you know what? I think it just comes in waves. I think it's just one of those things, um, like a lot of things, you know, like when the Tamagotchi came back for a bit. I think it's just, <laughs> I think it's just one of those things where just randomly. Uh, and I hate to say it, but I think, you know, the mainstream media and GQ magazine and, and all of that sort of stuff, that all plays its part. And do you know what? It can be something as little as a couple of celebrities, well-known celebrities growing a beard out. And then all of a sudden, everyone's talking about it and then everyone's growing a beard. So it just seems to be, a, like I say, it's just something that comes along in waves. Um I think I I missed the well the last one actually was during lockdown I think a lot of people were allowed to grow their beards because they were working at home and stuff so that was you know that was quite a boom then but I don't I wouldn't have said it was it was back in fashion it was just a a thing where people could have grown them um but yeah. I think before that was what 2015 or something 14 Yeah do you know that's literally that was that I was actually expecting you to say that because I kind of noticed then it was like people that like you'd obviously you see about a lot, you know, you speak to them in passing and all of a sudden these dudes are, I mean, and some of them were able to rock a full, a full on beard within it kind of felt like days, you know, like for me, yeah. it's been like, it's been a long, yeah. long journey and mine's nowhere near like what you've, what you've able to pull off there. But it's, it's not, it's not as, I don't think it's easy to rock a clean looking beard. It's it depends on what you got on what you got, you know, underneath that skin, doesn't it? I mean some people, like you say, you know, they just have these genes and they can grow these sort of hedges on their face, like absolute dense beard, you know, if you punched them it wouldn't they wouldn't even feel it because the beard's so dense. And it's just those people are just super lucky, I guess. But you've also got those other people that you know they don't shave for a weekend and they come back and they've got like a, a decent beard on them. 
over the weekend. Whereas mine, mine uh, admittedly grows so slow, it's unbelievable. I'm a real, I've got a real slow growing beard, so I'm not fortunate. And I mean, this has taken me years, and I actually cut quite a lot off of it. Um, at the beginning of the year, I cut about three, two or three inches off it. I did have a, a sort of eight inch, eight and a half inch down to here. Um, but it just looked a bit sparse towards the end, so I, right. I chopped it, and now obviously it looks much cleaner and, you know, hopefully more dense. Um, yeah, because obviously I was, to be fair, I like um, looking through your uh, looking through your YouTube content. I'd seen at some point that your beard looked, you know, obviously again only looking off a camera because I've never actually, you know, I've never not met you in person, but yeah. it did look at one point that it was a a bit more beard going on there. Yeah, so I, I, I like everyone, I think. For me, I was growing it and I thought, you know what, I'm going to see how long this thing can go. You know, I, I was I was thinking like belly button, you know, down, tuck it into your belt. You know, that sort of thing. I'm thinking, yes, ZZ Top. I'm thinking yes. I'll get there. I'll get there eventually. But like I say, mine grew so slow. And then I think I hit sort of terminal length at around eight and a half. It just seemed to stop growing at about eight and a half inches. So I just decided that, you know what? I might give it another go in the future, but for now, it's it's going to have to just come to a level where it's it looks better than than it did. So obviously, going back to going back to your products, um, do you, did you find that obviously the inspiration behind obviously that we we know that you were inspired by the Sons of Anarchy for um, for the, for the kind of the theme to 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 present your your products, but was you kind of driven to like improve kind of how your beer grew? Did you find that using different products kind of made the beer kind of different? I mean, you know, I'm only talking off cause I know nothing about this stuff, you know, so I'm yeah, intrigued yeah. as someone that's, that's just starting to kind of start to use products and yeah, of course. Yeah. So for me, I, when I first started, obviously didn't have a, didn't have a clue there was such thing as products. Uh, started growing my beard, you know, didn't realize there were products and then got more into it and realized there was products. Um, and I think I got bought a beard oil for Christmas. I think it was something like that. Cause I think most, most of us men don't spend a lot of money on toiletries and, you know, aftershaves and all that sort of thing that generally we get that for Christmas. We get shower gel because we don't want to stink, but that's about as far as we go in it. Um, yeah, 100%. So I got this beard oil for Christmas and yeah, I didn't quite know what to expect. Uh, splashed a bit on, put it through my face and uh, I thought, do you know, I just ran my, my fingers through my beard a couple of minutes later and it felt so soft, silky. And it was the, for me, that's what it was about. It was from then on, I was hooked. I was like, right, if this is what beard oil does for your beard, I'm, I'm on it, you know, cause that the, it feels amazing for me. It was more cause my skin was fine under my beard anyway so you know for me it, it, it was no issue with that it was just how it made my beard feel and like i said earlier with the you know the the confidence thing when you when you th when you think you're looking good because it added like a like a slight sheen to it as well which in the yeah. mirror looked looked really nice and it was just that that thing of that it feel it feels good it looks good and it just you know it just made me feel a lot a lot happier in myself yeah um so that's you know that's essentially what i set out to produce and then obviously as i got into it realized that actually there's a lot more benefits than just it feeling good it obviously keeps your skin healthy um and you know you can use things to get rid of the dead skin you know the brushes and stuff like that so there's a lot more to it than just it feeling good but essentially that's that's what got me hooked on it i mean one of the one of the things that i've uh, that I personally like so far um, is and it sounds really. I don't know whether you know it or whether you have it, but I like the fact that because now there doesn't seem to be any dry skin, it's yeah. not making my black jumpers and my black shirts look mucky. Yeah, <laughs> I know it sounds really weird, but like yeah. you, you know, you get it all round here, and it and it, you yeah. put a clean top, you put a clean top on, and like an hour later, it it doesn't look clean, and it almost looks yeah. like you don't give up, that you don't care. But it's like yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's 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 a tough one, the old dry skin thing. I mean, I had it. I've never had it on my on my beard before, but I did have it on my hair at one point because I I did have long hair for quite a few years, uh, and I've just cut it 
uh, this year actually but I did have long hair for quite a long time and actually I did start getting dry skin on the top of my head um, and yeah it was a, it was a real pain in the butt to try and get rid of it actually and it was it was horrible having the flakes and stuff like that falling like on your shoulders and and things like that so it was um yeah not good and difficult difficult to sort out as well as uh, Jason calls it beard beard rough yeah that's it beard rough yeah <laughs> so what um what inspired the the sense then what where was kind of you know because obviously a lot of companies are doing similar things and and there's yeah. a similar sense kind of what what yeah. what inspired you for your for your sense so what inspired me was what i like uh i'm i'm like i said earlier on i'm quite i'm actually quite selfish in what i do because what i do is i do what i want and what i like and then i sell it to everyone else um so if i if i didn't like a smell there's no way in hell i would release it as a product and other people might like it but if i don't like it it's not passing that first test so for me it was just a case of and this is what i go back to at the beginning about how i just made it for myself it was like i want to make stuff that i want to wear um and i kind of always had that always had that sort of thing in mind where i want to make something that i like and if i don't like it it won't be released um so it's quite quite a selfish answer but for me the scent is all about um what I, what i enjoy and what i like um and then it's basically just a case of trying to do you know something that that i like but everyone else will like as well so you know you might like a manly uh, sort of woodsy scent um but then you've also got like i do a sweet cherry one as well which is obviously completely end different end of the spectrum uh but you know variety the spice of life um so yeah it's just a bit of everything i guess yeah that, that well that's it and i suppose like you you know you if you're you're off out you're off out with a missus you might want to you know like like I, for me personally i only put aftershave on if if i'm off out you know? Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, um, so that's that. I, I, I'm not one of them that blathers myself. I mean, was it like you say, as long as you smell clean, that's the main thing. On a yeah, duck, it's a know, manly day -day musk. Base. It's a manly that's musk. <laughs> you know, deodorant and and jobs are good, and and then yeah, obviously the it. aftershave is. Uh, I mean, I kind of even like the idea of, uh, of maybe like a, almost like a mechanical smell. You know what I mean? Because oh, like okay, when you okay, wrench yeah. on the bikes and things, you got a bit of a like almost like a burnt oil yeah I don't know if yeah that's a scent that's out there or do, anything do you know like what that, actually but... i really like the smell of um do you know when you got like the really old bikes or the really old cars and they give out do you know when they burn through the fuel yeah. and it gives that like you know a, quite a pungent -y... i really yeah, love yeah, that yeah. smell but then it's yeah. like oh, i don't really know if i want that on my face or not but i really do love that smell <laughs> it's a, it's a mean, fine is line it, is, it, is it something have you have you have you messed about with trying to create something like that that you've just because obviously I'm guessing you like you say you make them for yourself you trial them you, you yeah. probably do you, do you get your close friends to kind of try it and then obviously then you yeah. would obviously so there's there's there is two types of different oil you can use in products there's fragrance oil which is uh you know chemically made in a lab somewhere and there's synthetic oils that are made to smell like things that you can't you know smell of any other thing like the sweet cherry for instance is a fa fragrance oil because you can't get an oil from a, a cherry um yeah. and then there's the other type which is essential oil which are naturally derived from anything from like the peel of an orange to like the bark of a tree you know and those are natural and those are the ones you can blend together to make different scents but by far blending scents together is the hardest part of making any cosmetic because you can get two things that smell brilliant and when you put them together they smell like crap <laughs> so, it's, so it's very much a case of you just basically play around waste a ton of money on essential oils because the other thing is you blend them together and then you, you smell it and then you leave you have to leave it for about 24 hours which a lot of people don't realize you got to leave it for 24 hours and then you smell it again and that is the scent that you will get so you can mix them together and they might smell great that second, but then 24 hours later, when they've properly sort of gelled together, they won't smell good. 
So that by far is the biggest, uh, the biggest waste of time that you can actually have is blending that stuff together because it does take ages and it can be quite, quite a kick in the gut sometimes when you've made about eight or nine different ones. And then you go back to it the next day and realize that all nine of them smell terrible. I mean, do they, um, uh, obviously we got Jason's asked what are the best ones to use, but obviously, uh, my question as well is, do, do they smell different when they're on, when they're in the beard? When because obviously they get, I'm guessing they they get a bit warm, you know. Do, yeah. do the sense ch does it changes? Does it change as it's so, as it's worn as it's aged? Yeah, that's a good question actually. So fragrance oils don't tend to change. They they stay the same, but they do stay they do stay the scent lasts for longer, uh, which is the advantage of a, a fragrance oil. Now essential oils, there's three different types there's a top note a middle note and a base note and what happens is is after after a certain time you will start noticing the top notes come through a lot more so that's when i say blending it's it's very interesting in blending them together because the scent that you have that you work into your hands can be very different when it go, when it's been in your beard for a while when you first put it in it smells exactly like it does at the bottle but then what you get is you get the top notes start coming through and then it can start almost, you know, slightly changing in your beard, which is quite nice. Um, so yeah, it, it can do, but most of the time, most of the time you get the smell of, of the original, you know, out straight out of the bottle. And does that, um, no, he's our, um, Jason's asked another one here. So also does the scent last longer in balm or butter? That That's, do you know what, Jason, that's actually literally kind of, where I was heading with that, because obviously that they, they're made differently, aren't they? So what is, you know, how do you go about about making them? And like Jason's so I'll, question, I'll, do they? I'll tell you, I'll tell you something that a lot of people won't tell you is that there's a regulation. You can only put so much into your product, um, and that that has been the same for a, a good long time. And it changes, it changes depending on the oil sometimes. So some some oils you can put less in, some you can put more. Uh, I think there's a there's two types of cinnamon oil, and one of them you can only put zero point zero two into your formula, so it's almost not worth using if you're making it small batch. If you're making gallons and gallons of it, maybe worth using, but if you're making it small batch, there's really no point because we're talking like a, a literally on the end of a pin. Um, but the actual law is is that it's one percent, uh, so one percent of the formula of a product will be either a fragrance oil or a essential oil um having said that obviously like i said a second ago um they they may be different depending on the oil themselves so each oil has got a specific number which goes to it but the general rule of thumb is one percent so actually the scent should last the same regardless of if it's an oil a balm or a butter it should be exactly the same and what whilst we're on the um it's obviously again like a novice like someone that's obviously just starting to get into growing the beards so obviously you go on youtube hence out you know obviously once we got in touch once i'd obviously got to speak to you i went out and obviously found that you had a youtube channel mm -hmm. there's obviously a lot of, like a lot of content like some people say that butters are better than oils some people are saying that um you know do you know what i mean there's what's your what's your uh thoughts on this is it is it is it something that you believe is a thing or so what i will say is you have to be quite careful because there are there are some people out there um that give misinformation in order to sell products so there was a thing a while back where there was this uh phrase coined called a triple dip and what it basically meant was that you use uh i can't remember the exact order but it was uh, use an oil a butter and then a balm and it was that i heard it and it was the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard in my life because a if you use too much product you're going to clog your pores up and it's going to lead to dry skin so that's a, that's a big no-no straight off the straight off the you know off the bat uh oils I'd go through this quickly because I'll bore the pants off you. But oils are basically liquid oils, right? Put together, put in a bottle, you use it on your face. A butter is liquid oils, and then you usually use a solid oil, so like a shea butter, mango butter. Blend that together, that's your beard butter. 
and your balm is basically the same as a beard butter, except they put beeswax in it. So putting oil on and then putting more oil on within form of a butter and then putting more oil on in terms of a balm it won't give you anything extra it's just it's just putting three lots of basically the same sort of thing on your face so it's, so, it's um, really not doing you any good so is there when when so you get up in the morning you, you do what you got to do and you go to prep your beard what what's how, what's your process because this is something that's interesting because I, I i i mean I'm learning, like, because obviously I'm learning how to try and shape a beard, try yeah, not yeah. to, because one slip and it's and it's gone, you know, it's like, and you've misshaped it all, and yeah, so, yeah. you know, I've been watching videos on how to like, because obviously, you know, like you say, you, at the end of the day, you've got to be passionate about about it to to have it. So what's yeah. your what's your process? Yeah, so so my process is, uh, and you know, again, a lot of people will tell you lies about this, but I'll be honest, but some mornings I forget to put products in my beard. I'm I'm up. I got to, I got to get my breakfast. I rarely do my beard before breakfast because I'll put beard oil in it and then I'll go downstairs and have a croissant for breakfast and then you know what it's like you know croissant with a beard. It, it's <laughs> good night, Irene. You know it's just got croissant all in it. There's more that goes in there than goes in my mouth. So I rarely do my beard before breakfast and then often I forget to put product in it. So there's some mornings where I don't use products at all. Um, but generally speaking. I'll either go for a, an oil or a butter in the morning. Um, I rarely go for a balm anymore because, you know, I'm not too fussed about what my beard looks like these days. Um, you get to a point, you know, when you're less precious about it, that, it, you know, if, if this hair's out of place, you're not too worried, uh, which is obviously what a balm does. It keeps everything, you know, in check, looking good. Literally was um, about, was literally, my, I mean, I, I gathered that's what it was for, but that was literally what I was about to ask you. A balm is literally just to shape it. Yeah, so so a balm has, like I said, it's liquid oils and then uh, solid oils, so shea butter and mango butter. They're they're the condition inside of it, those two. And then they also add beeswax, and the beeswax is what gives it that styling agent. It basically just allows it to be a bit thicker, and it can you know you can just sort of shape it a bit more. So that I mean, particularly if you're like at the what we call the awkward stage, the sort of three month stage. Uh, where your beard kind of just goes woof, like yeah that that's literally where i'm at yeah it's i mean often that's that's the time in growing a beard when you're called homeless the most <laughs> like every every everyone and your mother calls you homeless just because it, it your beard just goes all over the place so balm at that stage is a lifesaver but yeah effectively that's what it's for it's just as a styling agent just so that it's like if i go out and meet a load of beardies then I'll put balm in just because I, you know, I want to keep up with the, the Joneses and I want it to look good. But if I'm just bumming around like the house or, or out locally, I, you know, I'll just use a, a butter or an oil. Yeah, that's um. So obviously, kind of like from how I'm understanding it, oils and butters do the same thing. So obviously, as someone that's gonna buy them, why would you? What, which why would you buy both if they've you know is it is it i mean is that a good question i, I, I yeah, think it's a good, a good question. question yeah yeah so, so they they they're not the same they're very similar right okay uh, and they're similar in the sense that the liquid oils uh i'll, I'll talk about my products is obviously there's different types yeah, of yeah, oils yeah. you know so the, i'll go over it quickly there's there are certain oils that are a lot thicker uh, like castor oil, for instance, very, very thick. Um, and when you put it in, it tends to take quite a long time to, to sort of soak in, uh, which can leave your feel, beard feeling quite greasy. Uh, and I don't I don't use castor oil. I use a mixture of uh, argan oil, jojoba oil and grapeseed oil, which tend to sink in quite quickly and get your beard feeling softer quicker, which is why I go for those ones. Uh, now, the butters contain those same three oils, but they also contain shea butter, mango butter, and avocado butter. And what those do is those give you a really deep condition. So it, it takes a little longer to soak in, but once it does, it leaves your beard softer for longer. Um, they, are, they are similar, but very, very different if you were to use them. Most people yeah. tend to use beard butters at night time just because they put it in before night time, and then when they wake up, their beard's still super soft. Whereas an oil won't tend to make your beard feel as soft for as long 
but it will make yeah, it feel I've, softer yeah. straight, like almost straight away. I mean, I, I noticed that. I mean, to be fair, you know, I say I've only I've only just in the last three three four months been using um, beard products, and personally, I preferred the butter. You know, obviously, the yeah. the oil I just found was getting ready to go to work quickly. Oh, right, you know, quickly because it's obviously I'm at that stage where it looks like it's growing that way, not not that way. I'm finding yeah. it really hard to to get it to go that way. Yeah. Um, and I just found that quickly whacking some oil on and running comb for it, kind of just sorted it out quickly, you know. Yeah. the the other th The only other thing I'll say about that is that uh, a lot of people will probably just feel the same. Um, and the reason for that is that butters don't lie. So butters butters have ingredients in like shea butter and mango butter, and it doesn't matter if you use a very small amount of that; you'll still get the good condition in. Whereas a lot of people, what they do with their beard oils is they'll use, um, say, four different four different types of oil, right? So they'll use, say, th one one cheap one and three quite expensive oils, like, like more luxurious oils that tend to make your fe beard feel softer and stuff like that. And what what a lot of people will tend to do, a lot of companies tend to do is they they will use a lot of the cheap one and not a lot of the other three, the other luxurious one. But when they come to advertising it, guess which ones they list first? They will list those three luxurious ones first and then the last one on their list will be that cheap one. And the way you can tell is because legally on the packaging, you have to put the ingredients in order of percentage used. So that's why if you look at most cosmetic products that they do in like boots and stuff like that, the number one ingredient, aqua, water, because it's most most products like big, big brands use water based products. So that's a good way of looking to find out actually if your supplier or your your company that you're using are trying to have one over on you, whether they're saying that actually do you know what we use these great oils when in actual fact most of it is this cheap really cheap oil and then they put maybe a, a thimble size of the good stuff yeah yeah which obviously and like obviously everyone knows that water doesn't really i mean it, it hydrates slightly but obviously it won't condition and help the bit out this the beard itself will it yeah, I mean, to be honest, most most products that are water based, um, it's just purely they do it because it's cheap. It's, it's yeah. just it's just cheap, and then they they can put other stuff in that binds all the other ingredients to the water. Um, but essentially, the reason they're all water based is because water's cheap. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, um, I know, I know you've got to go soon, so we'll quickly quickly touch on um the OP's Beard Champ Championship, I believe. What what. You know that I mean, obviously, us and I mentioned to you about coming over and doing a hope. Hopefully, if I can get this stuff ironed out and it working a bit better, coming over and do a, a, a live podcast over there. Yeah, what, yeah. What was the um? What what inspired the the beer championship? So there's there's um there's beer competitions that run up and down the country, and there there is in most countries. To be fair, like America, there's tons of beer competitions that run you know all over the place over there. Um. And running a beard competition was something that I always wanted to do like when I started. So like when you start doing a business, there's there's little things in the back of your head that you think, I'd love to do that one day, you know, when I get a bit bigger. I'd love to do that when I get a bit bigger and, you know, and all that sort of thing. And a lot of the stuff, you know, you, you, over the years, you kind of think, oh, maybe I won't do that. You know, maybe that's a bad idea. But the the beard competition was always one that I kind of had my eye on just because when I first went to a beard competition, I loved it. Just not because of the competition side of it. I couldn't give a rats about that. And I realized that actually most people there couldn't give a rats about it either. It was just basically an excuse for all of us beardy people that know each other on online to meet up and have, you know, have a chat, have a good laugh, have a few drinks. And that's what it was all about. And then raise money for charity as well. So I thought, well, this is great. So it was ever since then that I thought, actually, do you know what? I'd love to do one. And there, there doesn't happen to be many down south because I'm, fr I'm from Reading, me, and Berkshire. So we're, we're quite far down south, whereas most of them seem to be up north. So I thought, well, if I do one down south, you know, hopefully we'll get 
bunch of new people and get some of the, the northerners come down as well. So I just thought I'm going to go for it. And if it falls on its face, at least I've given it a, given it a good go. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you by the looks of it, you've done, you've done, you've done a few now, haven't you? I mean, I can't, I haven't been able to work out exactly how many you've done, but I've noticed like you did obviously this year, last year, yeah, I believe twenty one as well. No, that's it. We've done two. Yeah, we've oh, done two. Just two, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three. Yeah, with another one planned. Uh, yeah, I see May, you've got. I see you've yeah, announced. You've May announced 25th. next year's one. Yeah, May twenty fifth, twenty twenty four. So yeah, awesome. it, it, it it's great. The atmosphere that we get because we hold it, we hold hold it at Loddon Brewery in Berkshire, um, and they've just got such a fantastic brewery there, um, and it's just in such a great location that the atmosphere almost almost creates itself there just because the setting is so nice. And we, I mean, to be fair, we've had great weather. Touch wood, it will be all right next year, uh, but we've had great weather the last two years. And yeah, but the atmosphere is. I, I find it very difficult to explain just because you have to be there to find it out. But yeah. The atmosphere is just so good. It's just the vibes there are just so good. And everyone just has such a great day. Um, you know, we've we've raised over three thousand pounds now for Daisy's Dream, which is a local a local Reading based charity as well, which helps children that have that's, suffered bereavement. That's incredible. So uh, you know, for me there's that feel good factor about that as well. And it's just everybody telling you that they've had such a great time. And obviously, like I said earlier on, with the mental health side of it, it's big in bearding as well. So it's just great to speak to people and, you know, everybody leaves and you know that they've got, you know, that they've got good good vibes running through their veins now because they've had such a great time. And that's what so it's all what, about for me. So obviously, like for somebody like myself who hasn't been to a beard convention, obviously, um, comp, like the competition aspect aside, what does like a day a day at Opie's beard um, beard championship entail? What with music is there? What 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 are we you know just sort of for people like me who haven't been? What what are yeah, we? Yeah, sure. What are we so, so basically, uh, you turn up, um, sign in. So there's usually a spectators ticket which you can get if you're not wanting to compete, um, and then we'd give you a little wristband like you get a, like a you know like a fest like a Reading festival or something like that. You'd get a wristband. So we've started doing those. Um, so, yeah, you get yourself a wristband and then basically just grab yourself a beer, have a sit down and watch all of us loonies go on stage. Like I say, there's there's so many different. It's not it's not as you as you would think. Uh, probably a lot of people compare it to like Crufts in terms of like, you know, how stringent it is. But actually, like I said earlier, it's just a bunch of people trying to have a good laugh. So you get people dressed as all sorts there's a guy that dresses as a wizard um there's a guy that comes uh almost certainly comes in drag every time <laughs> you know just because he just because it's funny and he likes you know he likes to just make people laugh and and all that sort of thing you do get the serious competitors that you know like even myself i wouldn't you wouldn't find me in drag i'd just turn up in jeans and a t-shirt so you, there's, there's plenty of people like that too but it's just it's just a bloody good spectacle, you know. You, I mean, we get a lot of locals that haven't got beards that turn up, they buy a ticket just because they want to, you know, put some money into the raffle, um, and then they just love watching us, it, it, you know, us guys on stage, and they know that they can come and talk to us because we're all just a friendly bunch. Like you said earlier on, you know, it doesn't matter how you look with the tattoos and the beard and all that sort of thing, you know, the people are just dead nice. Oh, definitely, and it, and it's usually it's usually the case that the the bigger, meaner, scarier looking individual is usually the most humble, yeah. genuine person that you that you generally encounter, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, like us sitting here speaking, speaking now, this is what you would get at a, at a, beard, at a beard competition. It would be this times sort of a hundred of me, the probably better looking guys that <laughs> died around, you know, that are willing to have a good chat and a good laugh for you, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's um, yeah, definitely. I mean, like I say, I'm I'm hoping to, hoping to get over to to next year's and hopefully even do something like kind of. I just kind of like the idea. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Did you host a like a live event at this year's? I haven't. I mean, I've been. I've tried looking. I unless I've not looked yeah, in the right so, place. Do you know what? So a lot of people said to me I should stream it live, and but I got so much on my plate during the day. Um, yeah, because there's imagine, not a yeah. there's not a there's not a big team of us. It's basically me and my wife 
run the competition side of it and we obviously have judges that help us out with the judging side of it and then the brewery do their bit so they run the they run a beer festival basically so they do all the beer and the you know they have a, a food food place there too um but yeah in terms of you know we haven't got a huge team of like 10 people running it so in terms of me i'm quite stretched on the day as is yeah. so i just think you know what live streaming it is is just probably a bit too stretched too far for me yeah i mean but, definitely you know, for, for definitely for like say for two people i mean the way i look at it, like uh, i don't know if you i don't know if you saw when i did a podcast with spike from the viking beer club uk um I, like i'm trying to put together an event um a, t- a 24-hour tattoo tattooing event mm-hmm. um basically uh f- trying to sort out one studio where there's like s- that obviously has to be more than like if there's two if there's two workstations there needs to be a minimum of four artists because no no not one artist is able to tattoo for for, for 24 hours but the idea yeah. is all the proceeds is going to go to charity but where i like the idea of introducing um a podcast side of it is not everyone can a, not everyone can make it to yeah, do yeah. the location. B, not everyone can afford a fifty-pound tattoo, which is kind of yeah. like how we, you know, were speaking earlier. Is it's great that people can afford to do things, but coming kind of tying in with people with with uh, that suffering with mental health is, if for example, there's an event where someone wants to go to your beard uh, beard championship, which like obviously like I want to go, but some people aren't able to go. Yeah. And what like one thing I'm learning already in the little time I've been on social media is it's crazy how much input you have on people's life. Like, mm. you know, if you're doing if because if, obviously, like you say earlier, you can't fake this. You can't fake the some stuff like this is which is driven off of pure passion and culture. Um and you know, so people that relate to you, they 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 wait. So like I, I wait for I wait for a guy's video every Thursday on YouTube. He mm-hmm. builds, they build um, custom bikes. And yeah. every Thursday I'm like, right, it, w- you know, what's going on? Why is his video, you know, and, and, and his video is on, or he might be an hour late because obviously he's brought, um, uploading from America. But that's kind of like the reason why I want to do it. I want to broadcast it because it yeah. allow people that can't make it, that can't afford a 50 pound tattoo. And then the idea is to set up the links where people can only afford to donate 50 P but, and they can do it like obviously they can do it um like discreetly because obviously they might you know they might feel a bit bad that they can't donate whatever but they'll but you know or they might feel embarrassed that they can't donate a certain amount so that's kind yeah. of the idea why i like the idea of introducing kind of like what tiktok are doing really but obviously you're doing it on your own platform well on your own profiles in, in a different yeah, way yeah. i suppose yeah no, it, may, it makes complete sense, to be fair. And, you know, if I had the technology and enough people to be able to do the, the streaming side of it, I'd, I'd be on it straight away because I try and keep it as, you know, as sort of modern and, um, you know, try and include as many people as, as you can. But it, it gets very difficult to a stage to be able to do all of that sort of stuff at the same time as running everything else. So it's um it's something we'll look at in our future and things like that. But... There's usually plenty of content. I do a lot of stuff um, on the Bearded Clubhouse Facebook group. Obviously, the the, um, the music show I do on the Fridays, stuff like that. People can come on there for nothing and interact with me, and you know we have a good chat and stuff like that. So in terms of oh yeah, I health, mean obviously you know yeah, I mean like you know, like I was obviously saying earlier, like when, when, as soon as I clicked on that, I was like that that's that's where I want to be. Like just to how professional it looks and like how. You've just got it dialed in. Obviously, you know, you've, it's obviously taking your time and that. And, like, it's like, I don't know, it's just cool as hell. Like, all all the, all the your digital graphics and everything. I thought, that's where I want to be. You know, it's it just looks presenting. It's clean, simple. Music's going. Like, you, your, your comments are, like, they're off, like, mad. You know, like, people are, like, proper. Again, like, they're... Re- I mean, does that ever pop into your head, like, how people, like, wait for you? like is that do you do you feel that i've i've never really considered myself a likable person if i'm honest i've always kind of thought i was a bit marmite if i'm honest but i think what i what i did was and believe me it took a long time to get there i've done a lot of shows where there was two people you know there was one or two people watching and that that's hard graph because for me that's where we're at now (laughs) 
on yeah, mine. Yeah, well, this this is what you're doing here is perfect with having somebody you know to to bounce off um, because it, it it's hard talking to a camera. It's hard sitting in a room by yourself talking to a camera. Um, so for me, I I really love I bounce off comments. Um, so like we've obviously got Jason and Lee in, so you know we'll bounce. You know the best thing you could do is bounce off their comments. You know have have good interaction because that's what it's all about for me. I don't do it because I love the music. I don't do it because I'm bored on a Friday night. I do it because I want to interact with the people from the bearding community. And me putting on a, a music show is the way that I do it. And to be honest, I play music just so I can give myself a little bit of a breather. It's only the songs are only two or three minutes. But in that time, I just get to have a little bit of a breather because when you're on camera, you're not quite yourself in terms of that your, your mouth tends to go a little bit quicker than your brain most of the time. Yeah. So you yeah. can get a, you can get a bit caught up. So actually, just yeah. having them two minutes just to take a second, just write something on your notepad, you know, that you want to talk about. Because the other thing is, you you tend to forget the things you wanted to talk about, and then when it's over, you think, "crap, I never talked about this, this that I wanted to talk about." So yeah, it's 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 difficult doing these lives, and people don't realise that. But for me, it's about interacting with the watchers, and and you know learning things as well because you learn a hell of a lot about the people watching your show stupid little things you know stupid little things but you learn little bits and hopefully you give out a little bit of information at the same time uh, yeah i mean definitely you know that's that's definitely definitely it and it's like you say you can you can just see like obviously someone that's literally like you and sent me that invite to the bearded clubhouse, which was awesome. And they're like going straight on there. You could kind of just see that community. Like everyone kind of knew everybody, you know, like I, obviously pro probably a handful of them, and a big percentage probably never met each other, but it just shows you like where, so where, where this community is at. It's, it, it's, it's so much stronger than people that probably realize, you know, it's, that's just something I, I've learned already in the, in the time that I've been doing it is, you get people that you've never met already start to feel like they can talk to you and like, Oh, say yeah. things to you that, that are like, wow. Like you've experienced that. And then, and then obviously like, then obviously doing research on, uh, you know, I spend lots of time trying tips and tricks on how to improve on things. And, and you get these big influences that are, are saying like, it is an honor. It's a privilege. It's like, and it's, and, and sometimes it hits you, you know, when you're, when you're sitting there listening, someone's opening up to you, like about something they've experienced or, and I don't know really, obviously my problem I lack is I lack the ability to kind of make it sound. I've got to learn how to kind of get the words out correctly, but kind of what I'm saying is like, it's, it kind of comes with its own burden. Like it's like that responsibility of like that person's confiding in you and you know, you don't even know them and it, like, it's just how powerful that being in our positions and you know, yeah. this obviously a lot more than me because you've been at it a lot longer and, yeah, I, I don't know. Do you find like after a podcast sometimes, or when you've had a conversation with someone, it's like, "Wow, that's heavy," you know? Yeah, more. Do you know what? More so, I have, I have sometimes have private conversations with people off offline. You know, they'll give me a ring um, for no for no other reason than they're they're struggling, and they won't they won't tell me they're struggling, but you know, I'll, I'll know that they are, and then we'll just and I don't make reference to it. No, you know, we'll just have a chat, you know, we'll talk about, you know, anything, anything, you know, we don't talk about, you know, the de depression or, you know, any, any of the bad stuff. For me, I talk about good stuff. I'm all about good vibes. You know, I'll talk about things that make people happy. And for me, that's, you know, when you put the phone down then and you realize actually, you know, you put the phone down, you think, right, I've just helped that person out because they were struggling then that that that's a good feeling that's a good feeling but they only you know that sometimes might be the case just because you're you know in the in the spectrum here uh online and you get to talk to people and they feel comfortable then because you know they can see what a nice person you are um they obviously know your voice and you know are comfortable with your voice um but it's also equally you know i will say to everyone watching this and anyone that watches this in the future, my door is always open. If you're struggling, you know, I'm no professional and I can point you in, in 
I can point you in the direction of mental health professionals, but I'd rather you if it's if it's if it's no one or me, I'd rather it be me. So you know, my door yeah. is always open for that stuff. And obviously, one thing like I mean, again, people that are watching it, like obviously they've definitely head over and join like the bearded club clubhouse because it's it's so well it's like it's like that it's like that old-fashioned pub vibe if that kind of makes like that warm like the fire's lit the music's rocking like the, the same boys that you've always always sat down with and hung out with they're the dudes that are already in the cop you know what i mean it's obviously i'm it's moved forward with technology it's not everyone can sit in a pub anymore and yeah. like me i don't drink anyway but it kind of got that weird fit and and it's and it's a thing that again that you can't you can't fake it and that's what i like about this type of stuff it's you can't fake it you know yeah i'm not i'm not playing wham jason i'm not playing wham <laughs> do you know what maybe in, maybe in december actually when everyone's doing that challenge i might whack on a bit of wham do you know when they say if you listen to the the Wham song at Christmas, you're out of the, the thing. I might play it then. But yeah, the reason I called it the Bearded Clubhouse, because it was, I was trying to come up with a name for it. And I thought, I want somewhere that everybody is, is happy to sort of, because there's a lot of different, you know, like you've got the Viking Beard Club and then you've got uh, Beard Mob and then there's, there's other different factions of, there's tons of different factions of bearding. Yeah. And I wanted somewhere that everybody could come to. So I was thinking like, an online kind of like bar or clubhouse everyone's welcome right exactly and if you don't want to come for six months that's fine you could just drop in whenever and that's how, that's how i kind of coined the the bearded clubhouse side of it um but we like to have a lot of fun and um, we also like to touch on the mental health side of it you know i often do posts on there with the the phone numbers and stuff like that um and you know a lot of it's beard related you know post a picture of your beard every wednesday we call wednesday beards and then yeah obviously i've do seen the, that i've seen that i do the beards rock show as well occasionally now so um but yeah for me it's it's just about having a community and connecting with those guys and whether that's just having a bit of a laugh um or whether that's the serious side of it um it, it's it's all encompassing you know we want to we want to try and do all of it yeah, yeah, that, that's it. I mean, like I say, obviously, you know, I've spent I spent quite a bit of time just scrolling through um, the Bearded Clubhouse, and obviously, like, I missed, I missed, um, I missed the last broadcast being uh, working a night shift, and yeah, I think yeah. I, I probably saw my comment on there, and it's, um, yeah, it it's it's great, and like I think with the whole mental health side of it is, like for me, it's been weird. So like obviously, I know I'm kind of dragging this on a bit here, but um like for the less than six months I've kind of had this uh, social media platform. It's my idea on mental health was always like, um, we, we all, we've all got it. Um, yeah. And like, for me personally, it was like, I just refuse to accept it's there, but kind of being able to listen to other people, obviously like similar like you talk to people offline and it kind of starts to hit home. Like, wow, you know, and almost starts to get you to kind of, think about yourself a bit in a different way. Like, uh, yeah. you know, am I really, am I really all right? You know, um, I think unfortunately, the, especially the UK, I think unfortunately there's a lot of, it's okay not to, I mean, I, I don't know if you saw one, I did a video where I, I put, it's okay not to be okay, but what's yeah, not yeah. okay is to, re, is to remain there. And, and yeah. I don't know if I had mixed reviews. I, I think it's hard to kind of, kind of put it out there without sounding kind of, a bit like I'll oh, get over it, which is not what I mean. Um, you know, I mean like it's okay not to be okay, but it ain't okay to stay there. You know, let's get you back up. Let's get you. In. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, maybe I'm not very good at word. I mean, I haven't had any complaints about it, but yeah, I do yeah. sometimes think, am I coming across a bit of a a bit of a dick? You know? Yeah. No. I think. I yeah. I think certainly you have to be careful when you word things, um, and I've always. I've always tried to word it because you never want to say, oh, if you're feeling depressed or if you're de if you're suffering from depression. So often what I say is, do you know what? If you're not feeling yourself, then let, you know, give someone a call. If you're not feeling yeah. yourself, you know, yes. if you're not feeling yourself, give a mate a ring, family member, have a quick chat with them. 
half hour. Don't even talk about if there's crap going on in your life. Don't even talk about it, right? Talk about good stuff. Talk about stuff because it's the good things that get you through. It's not talking. And sometimes, you know what? Talking about the crap stuff can help. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes it's great to get it get it out of your out of here and, and out of here. Yeah. It's good to talk about stuff that getting you down, but you don't want to dwell on it. You know, you want you want happiness in your heart. Yeah, and exactly. I think, you know, that's why, you know, I often just say, you know, if you're not feeling yourself. Because no one will say oh, I'm I'm feeling de- I'm feeling depressed or whatever. It's hard to say that because yeah. there's still that weird stigma around it for some unknown reason. So if you're not That's feeling it, and, yourself, you know, and like you know, like obviously going like uh, going back to like at the beginning, kind of like what attracted you to the to a lot of this is that the fact that like beards, flannel flannel tops, sons of anarchy vibe, they're to you what you deem like pure alpha male, and mm-hmm. if and the fact is, is like I can't relate to somebody that's in a suit and tie, clean shaven, no tattoos. Um, got degrees coming that's not you know i know i know i know unfortunately i'm kind of painting that typical image of a person but i can't relate to somebody like that i relate to somebody like like, tattooed beard rock and roll bikes banter and it's like well if if that person's kind of struggling with that then it ain't just me and which i think so powerful you know like in what especially like with, with the community that you've built up and obviously with the connections that you have like with the beard mob and uh, Viking Beer Club, and it is powerful. It is, and and ob- and obviously, being that you're the neutral dude in the middle, um, probably comes with a lot more responsibility as well than the chieftains and you know people within the club because like you're the dude in the middle that's got to keep everything neutral. Yeah, yeah. I I got to so say when I did join all the communities and stuff like that, I didn't, I didn't join up to help people. You know, it's not something that I would. It's not something that a I would have been comfortable with, and b something that if you put if you put me in a box and said, "Oh, do you want to you know jump on there and be the the ears for these people to talk to?" I'd have probably said, "Oh, that's too much responsibility for me." But you've also got to take it with a territory that actually, if you put yourself out there, then people will contact you and and want you know want your ear or want advice or anything like that. So you have to you have to take it on board and. Just be a good person. You know, every like you're saying with a suit and tie, pit, everyone's a person. You know, every single person. You might not have anything in common with them, but I, I guarantee you probably will have something in common with everyone. Everyone's yeah. got something in common with someone. It's just finding that something in common. You know. But obviously, like you, said, you know, like um, kind of like what I mean by that is like when you feel feel that you relate to somebody, it, the guard gets dropped. Do you know what I mean? That whole yeah, yeah. That like I say, obviously, I've I've like I said earlier, I've got a lot to learn, and I need. I know one thing. I've I, I listen back on my podcast. Some I listened like 10, 15 minutes of it, and I'm like, God, I make myself sound a bit silly because I can't kind of get. I know kind of what's in my head and the point I'm trying to make, but, and then like I, sometimes I'm just not wording it very well, you know. And... Yeah, do you know what? You can't beat yourself up about that because it's the spoken word, you know. If you if you if you're sat if you sit down to write a statement about something you can get it perfect, but if you're trying to say a statement straight from your brain out your mouth, it's not going to be perfect. And people don't expect it to be perfect. You know, people. <laughs> I say things near on a nearly daily basis that's making myself look an idiot, and I know that, and I've done it for forty years, you know, as far as I can remember. So. It, you're always going to get that. You're always going to say silly things. And like, you know, reading the comments is one for me because I, I, you know, when I speed read, I often misread words and then say it and I look an idiot. So it's just part of the territory. You know, when you, when you're doing live lives like this, you will say things. And then afterwards you'll think, actually, I could have worded it. Like you just let it go. Just, it is what it is. You know? I mean, my, my most interactive podcast was when I interviewed Opie, the chieftain, Oh and yeah, yeah. Like I, I look like I, I. When I watch back on it, I'm like trying to read people's comments, and I realise how gormless I look because I'm like trying to interact with everybody. I'm like, <laughs> that's the difficult. That's the difficult thing about this, and this is what, this is what people won't understand. Actually, trying to talk, and then also look at the comments because you kind of give them a half a read on the side here, and then you bring them up on the screen, 
and you know that could be sometimes really difficult like even just reading that that comment out there it's raw and uncut i'd rather listen to that than scripted sometimes so yeah i mean just stuff like that you know you could read it but yeah luckily there's no massively long words in there because if there's a really long word i'm like you know especially because yeah, on a little I, screen here so yeah. you're they're leaning like this yeah it's live it's live people expect you to make mistakes and do you know what sometimes you can make a mistake and it's un funny as hell makes everybody laugh at home and that's you know as to the fun you know. factor of it it's better than do you know what? i couldn't think of anything worse than doing it doing it not live just filming it and then getting it wrong and then deleting it and then recording it until it's all perfect yeah you know you don't want perfect perfect's not good no 100 percent. i mean that's kind of like i mean like i said i think obviously when i set out doing a doing podcast uh doing these live podcasts is i hadn't researched it um i'm i'm not i mean lee lee knows me uh, I, i'm i'm very like caveman ethic intelligence when it comes to uh technology and i thought right what's the easiest way for me to be able to the idea for me like i said earlier was if i can get one person that i'm interviewing that's so making seats for example if i can get him one customer or one like on his page that that was the feel the selfish feel good factor to me it was like mm -hmm. i'll just put them live and and then obviously I realized that for some reason, when you do a live on a phone, all of a sudden, all they see is your nostril and an eyeball because it zooms in. And I was like, right, YouTube, <laughs> how, how, how do I, how do I make it look better? And then obviously yeah. come across uh, service, these website services. And then I was like, right, okay, we're making progress. Um, yeah. Do you know, what? everyone makes the same mistake. I've done a live video once and I, I have put, set my phone up and then I, I turned it as it was live. And I didn't realize until afterwards I'd done, it was a live for about half an hour of me sat talking. I didn't realize I was on the side the whole time. That's awesome. <laughs> I, was just, I was just sideways the whole time. <laughs> so it's, That's awesome. You know, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. It's just basically getting used to the technology as well. Like you're oh, obviously definitely. using StreamYard now. See, if you've done another one tomorrow, you'd be a lot more comfortable using it than you will be today. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's, um, it's uh yeah I'll, i've lost you there again mate can you can you hear me um well, i don't really know what's what's going on there oh, i think we've i think we've lost him here what we got here yeah we're back uh, we're back yeah yeah sorry about that <laughs> Um, I, I, I think I'm still, I think, yeah, yeah, that, that's it. And it, and, um, like I say, obviously I, I won't, I won't keep you anymore, Jamie. I know you, I know you're a busy man. Um, no, so right. for, for people, for people that, um, for people that want to obviously check out your products and check out what you're about, um, they can find you on it's Opie's Beard, Opie's UK. I'm on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, the competition has got its own Facebook page too, um, and the Bearded Clubhouse Facebook group is is obviously free to join. It's a public group, and it's good. It's bloody good fun. Awesome. I mean, I'll um, I will um, I will post all all the all the links up as well for for people that are obviously following on on my platform on how to find you, and um, yeah, and obviously again they can um, if if they you know if, if some people only go on Instagram. They, obviously, they're able to go onto your Instagram page, and there's a, there's a relevant link takes them straight to your straight to your website. It's nice and yep. easy. That's it. You, yep. you you've got all the all the payment methods. It's all it's all there. Nice, clean, simple, really user friendly. Which obviously I was looking through it all, and it's it's good. And also, you've got um, a lot of content for people like me. And, and there's a lot of people that are only just started really growing beards. You've got a lot of a lot of tips and tricks and things on your YouTube channel, which I know you haven't yeah. up, updated for about a year. But there's, I think, I think you've got 76 videos, I think, something like that. Is it 76? Is it that many? I might, I might be wrong, but I'm sure <laughs> there's a lot. There's a you lot know, of videos I, I, on I've there. lost, I, I stopped looking at one point. It probably, I hope it's 76. I thought it was close to 50, but yeah. <laughs> I hope it's seventy six. Yeah, yeah. There's I might quite, be wrong. Quite a I, few, could be I think wrong, I, but... I also stopped making videos because you know what? I stopped running. Out, I run out of things to talk about. I think I pretty much covered most stuff. 
Well, I mean, you could always you could always kind of do like what I've been trying to do and just literally just. I mean, I broadcast up until I used um, Streamyard today. I, I broadcast live to both platforms, to YouTube and to and to Facebook. But you could always yeah. you could always post your um, re, repost your content onto your YouTube channel because obviously there's there's a lot of people that only like to use YouTube for for, for yeah. watching, isn't there? You know. Yeah, I did. I did do that at one point with the Instagram stuff. I I kind of used the um, what's it they call the Reels, isn't it? Is it Reels? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I yeah. used that on on you know for the shorts on on youtube for a bit um but yeah like i said i just kind of stopped with the youtube stuff just because it was yeah it, it wasn't seeming to get me anywhere um so yeah i just kind of stopped with the youtube are you thing. on um i mean i tried to look for you earlier on tiktok uh are no you on TikTok? i'm not much i'm not much of a dancer so i give tiktok a miss i just thought i mean there's a, there's um to be fair there's uh there's quite a bit of big big content on tiktok you know oh is um, there yeah yeah because i obviously i um I created the reel for Instagram that you shared and right. then I doubt because again, I'm, you know, trying to be clever and not have to overwork things. I download the reel, re-upload to, to TikTok. And then I noticed that there was uh, obviously when you put your hashtags in loads of beard mm -hmm. content comes up. Right. Okay. Cause, yeah, it, cause yeah. obviously as you probably know, anyway, when you put like hashtag beard, it comes yeah. up with like how many people have hashtagged it. So like yeah, hashtag right, yeah. beard TikToks come up with like 1.3 billion hashtags. Oh, okay. Right. So it's yeah. uh, maybe no, something No, I got to say, I look, at, I look at TikTok and I just think, oh, do you know what? Another social media platform. To deal know. with. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. So um, at the moment it's still Facebook and Instagram, but yeah, <laughs> I thought it was just teenage girls dancing on there to be fair. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I mean. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have been on it because that stuff, like you say, that you don't. You don't need to sit and watch that stuff. It's no, I don't. It melts nah. your brain, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, and, you know, and, and then and then it gets worse. It gets worse yeah. when they when they when they seem to convince their granddads to get to get on on and. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, so I'm gonna. I'll I'll, I'll uh, leave you to it because I knew you said you need to get off as well, and we've already been on an yeah, extra go and go half hour dinner. or so. And dinner. mate, thank you very much for uh, you're very welcome, mate. Thanks time. for having us on. It was great to have a chat with you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And ho hopefully, I'll um, hopefully I'll get on to, I'll get on to, uh, get on as a guest on yours and kind and of the beers get a rock. Bit, yeah, that's it. Get a, see how it really like try and get a learn, get a feel for learning how it goes on like, on a bigger because obviously you yours is being watched by like a lot more. Like I think. I think your last one when I when I tuned in about half an hour after you'd already had like three four hundred views. There was yeah. about like two three hundred. Well, three, I think it was about three hundred and sixty sixty uh, comments. And yeah, you know, and you're just there, just chilling, like. And you got your your friend on there with the with a with a bigger beard. I can't remember his name, but I was oh, was it like, Bear or Carl? I don't, I don't, I've, I've Carl, only just I started. I've only just started doing guests on it um just because i love i love this you know just interacting with somebody I, don't get me wrong i love interacting with the comments as well but the comments don't speak yeah. to me whereas it's a lot less reading when it's talking to a human being which is which is nice for me so um yeah i like i like being able to bounce off people as well so i, I did say you know because i used to do it on a monday night the uh it used to be called um, music monday uh, and I stopped it and started doing it friday night just because it worked better for me and i felt like more people were kind of chill on friday night yeah. Um, so I moved it Friday night, but when I did that, I decided, you know what, I'm going to try and have as many guests on as I can because it makes it more fun. And like when Carl was on, we done the uh, the sour sweet challenge, and it was yeah, I saw horrible. that. God, it was so yeah, he'd horrible. already he'd already tried one the day before, didn't he? Yeah, he had, yeah, but he didn't he didn't let on how bad it was. It was honestly horrendous. Um, but do you know what? I don't mind doing all that sort of stuff on a live because it's funny and it's it's fun, and that's that's what a live should be funny and fun. Definitely, yeah. definitely. So, yeah, hopefully, yeah, well, hope, hopefully, fun. I get, hopefully I get on one of your future ones and yeah, um, but we won't do any sour sweets. I'm done with the sour sweets. <laughs> I'm trying to think what else, what else we could do. Um, oh, bug eating or something. That was oh, the only mate, thing I, I could know, think. Yeah. Edible bugs or something. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm not doing yeah, chili either, be... so that rules are quite a lot of stuff out. Jalapenos? <laughs> no, I I tell you I did find jelly beans actually. There was some horrible jelly beans, so maybe if you jump on we'll do the jelly bean challenge actually, that'd be a good one. Yeah, we'll do some 
uh, yeah, yeah, we'll do something like that. I, I, I'll yeah. think of some. I'll think of some crazy. I'll put some crazy suggestions to you on the on the DMs as well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, awesome stuff. Yeah. All right, then, mate. Well, again, so to people that want to obviously check out your 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 products, OP's OP Beard Co. Beard Co. Yeah. And um, yeah, and then hopefully, hopefully, I'll get to see you at the next year's beer championship which yeah, you said was great, the 20 yeah. the 25th, 25th saturday saturday 25th of may yeah yeah so and that's down in year. that's in reading yeah it's at, it's at Loddon brewery which has been a, a brewery running for 20 years now so um yeah it's a, it's a well-established brewery but it's it's great it's, it's a really good, that's awesome really good oh, one thing i did forget to ask you actually um do you have a motorbike no i, I tell you what i did start learning um just after lockdown um but i i never i never got around to doing my test just because of i run two businesses and they pretty much dominate my entire life yeah so i had a i had a bike set out the front and i enjoyed going out on it but what you have you know what it's it's uh what was it uh so <sighs> do you know what i can't even remember now i cannot even remember um Yeah, cruiser, no, cafe racer, no, it was, bike. It, no, it was just a, um, it was just a a one two five. I can't remember exactly what kind of. I think it was a Z Suzuki something or other. Was it a cruiser? Okay. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. So it's either cruiser, a yeah. Maruda or a Intruder, or a GN. I think a Maruda. I think it was. So is it single single cylinder? I don't know, mate. It's hard too technical for me. I got a mate around the corner who, who's a big big on his bikes. Um, when he found out I was doing my CBT, he was just like, "Oh, I've got a one two five. You can have." I said, "What the hell have you got a one two five for? You've you've been riding bikes for years." He said, "Oh, I just bought it." I said, oh, mate, Why? I, he I said, love, "I just I want love. to cruise around on it." I said, "You do you do know how slow they are, right?" It's like, <laughs> I, honest so, to God, yeah. right? So so I've got um. Our last bike I rebuilt was a 1987 ZX10. Um, yeah. Thing wants to kill you everywhere. Anyone, any, anyone that's tuned in that that knows yeah. 80s bikes, mate, they want to hurt you, right? And, yeah, and yeah. Not, that, it's not that they necessarily want to hurt you at high speed because because like a modern day 600 is equally as quick as my bike, but yeah, I get more enjoyment out of my 125. That, I, that again, uh, will once I get my shed sorted and everything, will there'll be a lot of content on that being rebuilt? I've got. Yeah. hand shift foot clutch 60 mile an hour great on mileage i get more fun from that um and, and obviously like you say you know if you haven't got a license it's what i believe just under 200 quid to do cbt uh, yeah, 20 yeah. pound road in yeah. and and for me as long as it does the speed limit and it's two wheels that's all it matters it's not oh, i ride a harley or i got this i got yeah that. yeah yeah no to be you fair know. it was it was good fun to just ride around like the local streets but as you got onto the more sort of you know the bigger speed limits actually you were just a bit like come on come on like shaking yeah. the thing trying to shake the thing for it just you know yeah. that that cap of i think i can't remember what the top speed on the thing was i think it was something stupid like 55 60 something like that yeah um yeah it's, and it was um... just you know you're just there and it's oh come on Cause, yeah, and it does. You, I mean, you're yeah. on big long straight roads you think i've got i've got this handling wise it's just not giving me the speed so it was just you know I, I don't understand for the life of me why someone with a with a full license would ever have a 125 just because it's you know it's it must just be like wearing clogs to go running you know <laughs> i don't know yeah i mean like i said mate, i've got i've got mine and it all it, you know it all top out at 100 135 ish but yeah trying to hold on to it at that speed and i don't know I yeah mean, but I, you've I'm got you've even... got that speed if you want it though you don't yeah you know, you, just because yeah. you've got it doesn't mean you have to use it you know it's just nah. there if, if you can use it safely you can use it but obviously it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it kind of thing you know yeah definitely definitely uh like, um yeah so obviously again i'll let you get on just before i go actually um the the lady, lady that commented last south southwest airbrushing for those of you that haven't checked out that podcast, uh, check that out and also check out her content because uh, she's an incredible airbrush artist. Um, so, yeah, if you go head over and see what she's been doing because uh, her, her, her artwork is awesome. 
I love and, watching. Uh, I, I love watching airbrushes. I think so. Have you have you seen have you seen have you seen her work? I think I saw a little bit of it actually. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was yeah. on one of your it was on one of your stories. I think. Or something. Yeah, yeah. I can't I, remember I share, exactly I where I caught it, but I do, I love watching airbrushing. I think it's it's amazing. So so talented to do it. Yeah, she her, her works. Um, I mean, any anyone that can airbrush. I've had a couple, I think I've had a couple of people now that that are able to airbrush and. I've attempted it. It's definitely, it's definitely not as easy as they make it oh, look. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even attempt it. I know as soon as it balls it up, <laughs> yeah, straight away, <laughs> straight away, just like three seconds in. <laughs> oh, fuck. God damn. Yeah, it's it's not something that you can, re, it's not something that you can redo or easy, is it? If you mess it up, I don't think. I mean, like I say, mate, I I briefly attempted it. I mean, personally, I find tattooing easier than airbrushing, um, yeah, yeah. and not that I'm even a pro tattooist either i mean I'm, I'm able to i'm able to lay out some clean presentable pieces um yeah. i'm certainly not winning any awards but i mean i get i get repeat customers i get the same people come back for more so i must be doing something okay but in my experience i found that yeah tattooing is easier than airbrushing yeah that yeah, definitely you know obviously you can rub out you can rub out airbrushing well spread spread back over but yeah you can't be tattooing but no. it's the whole <laughs> not usually <laughs> no no well well i've seen yeah that's it and it? it's um but yeah obviously again i'm not gonna keep waffling otherwise i could keep you here for another hour yeah um, no it's good mate yeah 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 and, well thank uh, you very much for having me on appreciate it awesome mate i'd say i look forward to speaking to you again in the future and yeah have a have a good one mate yeah we'll do thank you very much cheers See mate. you later bye bye